The real message from this report is a strong wake-up call for everyone really to take action on climate change and particularly it sets out the policy options that are available now to do that. The focus of Working Group 3 of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is on mitigation policy. So that's essentially what we need to do to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases and how we're going to get there. With the IPCC, its role is to provide advice on this based on the evidence to governments. And in IPCC language, that means we're trying to be policy relevant, not policy prescriptive. The other thing to know is Working Group 3 is one part of a trilogy. So there are Working Group 1, which focuses on the physical basis of climate change, and it released its report last year. We've just recently had the report of Working Group 2, which focuses on impacts, adaptation and vulnerability. So this is the final in the series, if you like, with this focus on mitigation. There are around 270 people who contributed to this report. The lead authors also the particular chapters that are part of the report. So in this report, I was the lead author. And what we do is we look at all the scientific evidence. In this case, this report reviewed more than 18,000 scientific papers about mitigation policy. And we collate all of that evidence and write up the report for our governments to review and comment on, and they also approve line by line the summary for policymakers at the start. I think one of the reasons that I was nominated by the Australian government to take part this time around was because of my expertise on international climate law and the fact that we're really getting to the point where the rubber hits the road on mitigation and the need to reduce emissions. It's a pretty urgent task now, and there's a lot of focus on what the policy response should be. there's an increasing range of new policies and new laws that are being effective in bringing down emissions. There's also reducing costs associated with some of the key technologies like solar, wind, batteries. So that's part of the good news story. There's lots of other things that are new to this report. Some of the new elements include that we're updating um, discussion of the progress that's being made to reduce emissions, evaluating the pledges that countries have made and whether they add up sufficiently. There's also some really new aspects like thinking about the role that people's lifestyles play in addressing emissions and what changes we can make on an individual basis, but also supported by our communities, society, government to make a difference on climate change. The key message from this report is that we're not on track to deliver 1.5 degrees of warming. We're going ahead much further than that without deep, urgent cuts in greenhouse gas emissions. So there's a real message of urgency that emerges from this report. I need to act in the next couple of years, which are going to be critical, and to be halving the world's emissions by 2030. What the report really emphasises is that the tools that countries need in terms of policies are already on the table. We don't need to wait for new technologies to emerge. So there are really big gains to be made in terms of technologies like solar, wind, batteries. There's changes in lifestyle that can be made. There's actions that we can take in the agricultural sector, reforesting or a foresting land soil capture uh, and storage. So there's lots of options there and lots of policies that governments could adopt to take forward those sorts of measures. And these are policies that would be relatively cheap to implement. The assessment that the IPCC has made is that the cost of most of these policies to reduce emissions, halve them by 2030, the cost is less than 100 US dollars per tonne of carbon dioxide equivalent. And in many cases, the cost is more like $20 a tonne. So they're achievable now. The Paris Agreement is our framework uh, treaty at the international level that guides countries' efforts to reduce emissions and adapt to climate change. And it only came into force, or came into effect rather, in 2020. 
and we haven't really had much experience of whether it's actually going to work. What the assessment report looked at then was how effective the Paris Agreement is and by and large found that it is effective in getting countries to cooperate on climate change and also to increase the ambition of their nationally determined contributions or policies over time. So we're seeing good signs that the Paris Agreement is working but another key finding from the report is that Paris alone is not enough. It needs to work in conjunction with a range of other cooperative mechanisms at the international level and transnational business partnerships, transnational partnerships between cities, social movements are all playing a part in that additive function that means that Paris can be effective but with these other pieces of the story as well. Look, we always want to know what we can do to be positive about our climate future. But the IPCC report, Working Group 3, does deliver a very sober message, which is that we're not on track to where we want to go to. And unless we're taking urgent action, deep emissions reductions, we're not going to be able to keep uh, 1.5 degrees alive. And that means that we're facing a more significantly devastating climate future.